Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we begin with another Mars probe, this time hopefully in a more auspicious transfer window, let's say. Uh, I ha uh, somebody suggested a mod so that we could line up with things a little bit better. I haven't added that in yet. I'll take a look at it and make sure that it's all right with everything else and safe before potentially putting it in here. But uh, because I've never used it before, most of these mods that I have in here right now I've used before to some extent. So it's important to keep in mind mod interactions. I like to be safe with those things. Anyway, uh, throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. And launch. Yeah, just in general, I'm really slow at updating mods. I, I don't like to risk breaking saves at all. So, and if you suggest a mod, I'll be really hesitant to put it in for a while. I might eventually do so, but it'll take me a while. So somebody had asked what these side pods are. As far as I can tell, they're a combination of fuel feed lines and equipment pods. It's pretty obvious that this one is stretching up to the oxygen tank up here, and this one is sort of with the kerosene tank down here and they're probably feeding the booster engines, though there are additional oxygen feed lines on some models of the Atlas. The Atlas changed over time, and some of them have bigger equipment pods on. Uh, it's all very complicated. Some, some of them have other lines going further up. Uh, this one does have this line here that continues further up. That's for other purposes. So there's a lot going on in those pods, basically, is the best way of putting it. It's, they're not... But I, I believe there's some fuel feed line going through them as well, which is why one is longer than the other, because one is stretching to a different tank. But I'm not 100% sure. They sure weren't shy about making the Atlas rockets asymmetrical. Okay, booster set. Fairing set. But yeah, in general, the booster skirt plumbing is really difficult for me to understand from the schematics. Half of them don't really show where the lines are because they're just trying to show how the flow works to the engines. And shut down. 217 by 195. Uh, not the best trajectory, we barely made it here. But we did make it, that's the important part. Uh, separation. RCS is good. Alright, anything else I have to configure? No, nope. uh, let's try and plot for Mars. Let's get a little bit more distance though. Okay. Okay, MechJet was quick about it. It's given us uh, 4,017 meters per second burn, which is what we were expecting at this time. And so we'll expand the stage and be able to make the finer adjustment with the probe's own fuel. And hopefully it'll work out. Uh, let's see what the timing is. We need about a minute and 20 seconds for most of the burn. So we'll start about mm, 50 seconds ahead. Our Atlas stage is sort of threatening us here, but we're about to start, so... Stabilizing throttle up and ignition. Well, we have an ignition. We're just a little bit late on the burn, maybe one second. It's always good to be able to expend this stage. In fact, I'll start using up the RCS fuel. We've got too much still. I, I, I guess I didn't reduce it on this one. I thought we had we were supposed to have less. Oh, no connection. Well, we are going to end up burning for a little while. Hopefully we'll get connection back by the time we finish this. It's a heck of a pass we've got here. We're going all the way out here. And then coming back in to hit Mars in 415 days. Okay, we have something. 
Oh, oh it's, it's trying to chase things. Oop, oop, oop. Stop, 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 stop. No, no, this way. Keep going this way. Keep going this way. Ooh, it's touchy. Um, I'll take a crash course, to be honest. RCS off for now. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Is there... Well, the tank is going to block our solar panels if we don't decouple. We'll have to make further adjustments. Okay, well, shame we have to dump this fuel, but... We've got 400 meters per second on the probe, so let's do it. Uh, I hope this isn't too much decoupling force. Oh, that looked like a lot of force. Oh yeah, we've lost our Mars encounter altogether. Um, so we want to RCS. Um, just go uh, retrograde. Okay. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's what I wanted. All right, how's our sun situation, though? We're still rotating. That's not great. I feel like we can reserve the other Mars probe that we have already built for Venus instead, maybe. We've tried enough on the Mars thing. Okay, well, I think even though it's spinning, it's okay right now. Especially because... No, it is actually steadily reducing its electric charge. Just hold it right there and make sure persistent rotation is on. Whoa, that changed our orbit a whole lot. Well, gosh darn it. <laughs> I think we're just going to have to do a mid-course adjustment to fix that because it's too touchy right now. Okay, we've got about three meters per second. The thing is, if it's too low a burn, you know it's too sensitive. So that um, when you turn to face the sun after you do the burn, it's going to mess it up. Uh, but if it's too much, of course, that's annoying because we have a limited amount of delta V and we'd like to keep as much of it as possible. So we've got this node in 132 days that costs about 3 meters per second and we'll see if that's okay. Um, we will add that alarm and this is on its way. Um, we've got a SOI change to pay attention to for that Mars 1 probe. And that's entering Mars SOI in 70 days. The problem with that is that doesn't uh, satisfy the launch a new vessel thing like this does. So, alas, <laughs> uh, that's the problem with that probe. We've got another probe that uh, will be doing a maneuver here. And I think that one is at Apoapsis. Uh, the Venus window is in 199 days. We've got this orbital flight with one crew thing. So we should probably do that Maybe knock that out next, because uh, the rest of the stuff is going to come up later. But we do have a Mars 1 ready to go for Venus. We'll try to be sure to rename that so we don't get confused. Really, with all these Mars 1s, I should have them be Mars 1A, Mars 1B. I guess well, I'll change this one right now. Okay, so at least that's distinct. I could have sworn I had queued up the launchpad upgrade in preparation for a lunar sample return mission or lunar flyby, but apparently I had not. Well, I think it's about time. So we're upgrading that facility. And maybe I should commit to upgrading the R&D building. I swear, I, I guess I had done the astronaut complex so that we could do EVAs. Maybe I didn't do these others. Um, as far as I know, the vehicle assembly building, if we upgrade it, we get a second build slot, but Honestly, uh, not in that much of a hurry for that. And this, we're going to have to do quite a lot of upgrades because every 25 additional science, you need a new upgrade. So with our current situation, we can get up to this line. And then with the next upgrade, we can get up to like here. Wait. Uh that one is 80, actually. We can't get improved Hydrolox engines. We are able to get most of the stuff up to this line. So it's it's like one upgrade gets you here, and then the next upgrade will get us up to... Well, that, that's a big, bigger physical leap in the thing. It's, uh, it's uh, these. These we will get for the next upgrade, and then we have to upgrade the R&D building again. It's amazing how often they have to upgrade these buildings. 
but yeah so let's commit the funds to that so that I don't spend it on other stuff and we've got uh, liabilities amounting to about a million so I'm just trying to figure out how many upgrade points I can afford with all this let's see I, I swear I thought I discussed the whole launch pad costing more thing last time and we had started the upgrade but okay whatever let's get that to five build points per second let's get this to point eight all right that'll be fine for now we're gonna have to spend a lot of money on the missions to fill other stuff too so we'll see we'll see all right uh, we're building a crude atlas 2 to fill both the orbital flight mission and also the first eva mission finally okay we are ready to launch and i don't remember who i want for this mission um I think we we were looking for Nake to be the one. Thankfully, uh, launch pad. Oh, I'm gonna give people bad ideas. Uh, launch pad upgrades do not put your launch pad out of commission, so that you can't launch rockets from them. That's nice. <laughs> Please don't do that. All right, SAS on. Throttle is up. Nake looks ready. Nake, Nake, and ignition. launch. So all we have to do is get into a reasonable orbit and then do an EVA. I don't even know if Kerbals get more experience for doing an EVA in this setup. I sure hope so. Okay, booster set. Relieving some of the G-forces, thankfully. Okay, what was the number they wanted? We can always use the OMS engine to finish it. 150, typical. We'll be probably not quite getting there initially. I could try and use the OMS engine to finish orbit, but... rather just get to orbit with this engine first. Okay, uh, 210 by 148. Separation. It's fine, let's... I always forget to put the RCS thrusters in their own stage. We really want those first. Okay, going normal. And that's so that we can release the nose cone properly. Okay, nose cone is off. I mean, I could mount the controller here upside down so that we could control from there and the thruster would make sense, but this is fine too. It doesn't take too much brain power to figure this out. Okay, so finishing up orbit. According to their specifications, uh, she actually needs to spend nine hours here before it counts. So let's make sure we're in contact with Houston. There we go. Well, that's not really Houston, that's Brownsville, but close enough. Okay, we'll have Smart ASS kill rotation. Probably safer. And Nake will be getting out on a side where she can get a good look at the Earth. That's good. EVA. Okay. Give us a report. Keep. And I guess that's all. Board. <laughs> I'm not taking any chances, darn it. Uh, so, did we get the contract fulfilled there? Well, transmit the data back to KSC. All right. Hmm. Review stored data, transmit. Taking a bit of time. We're right over. Well, not right over to KSC, I suppose. We're right over JSC, Johnson Space Center. Uh, crew report is new, actually. Huh. Go figure. So, I, I just want to have Nake go out again. Was it like bio or something? 
No, it's just near Earth. Let's see if we can get a few more crew reports. Oh, Savannah we've done or not done? We have not done. We need to do more crew reports, apparently. Does it look like we'd be hitting shores? This is Taiwan, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, crew report. Yes. Good times. Okay, we have a fine descent trajectory. I always forget how big the Pacific is. We might end up in the Amazon or something. I don't know. Cancel the Atlantic. We'll aim for the Pacific. <laughs> Can't even decide which ocean I'm aiming for. Okay, at 84 kilometers in descending. Soon I'll turn off the RCS thrusters. I was wondering whether we had done a crew report. Apparently we're not in plasma yet. I don't... That... I don't think with remote tech we get plasma blackout, do we? Well, even though those thrusters are trying as much as possible to burn, they can't get rid of much mob propellant. Uh, no, I mean, it is mob propellant, it's hydrazine. Yep. They're just really tiny. I've really been overpacking the ablator. So the next order of business will actually be the SOI change for this Mars 1 mission, entering Mars SOI. It won't count for the contract, but it will be our first Mars probe to enter the SOI of Mars. We'll see if we can pick up something related to Mars for it. We also really, really don't need to carry this HTP or use the pod zone thrusters. Yeah, there's a lot of mass here that we don't, strictly speaking, need on these low Earth orbit missions. Everybody ready to give me money, right? <laughs> Alright, full parachute deployment. We are at safe speeds. Over where exactly? Uh... Looks like the Pacific. Yeah, we're in the middle of nowhere in the South Pacific. Probably the closest land to here is the Galapagos Islands. Okay, we've got him. Welcome back, Naki Kerman. Okay, we got some funds back. And Naki's ready to go. No experience gain for an EVA. Well, shucks. Uh, on leave for a day. Well, no, no, that's not a day. That's like uh, two weeks. On leave for two weeks. Well, that's all right. Again, it takes us time to build rockets over here. Okay. Well, yep, we know what we're going to do next. But let's take a look at contracts. We're down to just one major contract here. So, anything to do with Mars? Not really, and it'd probably say, like, you have to launch a new vessel anyway. Could get more solid rocket motors just for the upgrade point, but 13 science is now more valuable, more valuable than 30,000 funds, so I don't think so. Um, and speaking of getting science, maybe we should invest in more science technologies, even though I'm really pining for um, the stuff we have here with the bi-propellant RCS and also what else was I looking at oh yeah we need lunar rated heat shields I might take a risk yeah let's let's get this science stuff on the bet that it'll pay off and we can unlock those other technologies thanks to it and we might want to move that up. Let's take a look. What's uh, what's ahead of it right now? Advanced capsule era material science, improved flight control, and early landing. Yeah, let's get the science. Okay. Okay, we've got some time before the next thing that we have to do. We've got 39 days until Mars 1, the first Mars 1, enters Mars SOI. So I decided to unlock some engines and do a new engine test, also making use of these Titan fuel tanks. And that's mainly because we're going to upgrade the pad in seven days. So by the time this is built, 
we can launch a rocket greater than 150 tons, and this is greater than 150 tons. Now let's just double check. We do have the avionics. Avionics are sufficient. We've got a core down here and also a core here. And inside the fairing, there we go. We've got, so let, let's go from top to bottom here. So we've got a uh, tiny little, it's supposed to be a sample return mission, but we don't have the Delta V for that. But in principle, this would be the sample return capsule with the parachute. Um, we've got early controllable core and antennae and everything. And then we have this avionics unit here for five tons. And it's a one kilonewton thruster on here and hydrazine. Uh, when we unlock the better uh, RCS propellants, this stage will get a lot more delta V. Right now, if we put away curve alarm clock, uh, right now it only gets 1,383, which isn't enough. So that's part of the problem. Now, yeah. Uh, next stage is the first use of an AJ-10 mid-range, which has infinite ignitions, I believe, though not very good efficiency, 278 vacuum. So that's also part of our problem. We could do with a better engine there, but we can't replace the fact that it's got infinite ignitions as far as landing. You can see the little lander legs there. Uh, not very good. I really need tweak scale, because especially for the lander legs and nose cones. Uh, not the procedural nose cones, obviously, but the procedural nose cones don't have this particular shape, this conformal shape, and I like this conformal shape. So if I'm going to use that conformal shape, I really need tweak scale to be able to resize that. So I'm thinking of adding tweak scale, uh, finally, and also for the landing legs, it's probably necessary. Uh, this is our first new tooled tank. Yay! So far, we haven't tooled many tanks because we've been using prefab tanks like this. But this is a Tank 3 Balloon Tank, uh, 2 meters by 2 meters. And that's for this, uh, the RD58 uh, S1.5. Uh, right now, it's on which configuration? Um, 11D33. So many different names for it. Technically, it only has a rated burn time of 4 minutes and 30 seconds, but we're pushing it a little bit. And we'll see about that. We'll push it to failure. And um, yeah, so there's a balloon tank for it. It can use a balloon tank because it's not a pressure-fed engine. And it's just using kerosene and liquid oxygen. So we'll use that as our transfer stage to the moon. And uh, so yeah, that's our first new tool tank. And the only tooled tank that's above a diameter of 1.2 meters. So everything else is all these tiny little things that you see, all these balls hanging around. Then we've got the Titan 1 series tank, and as you might expect, this is an LR-105 up here. And let me hide that build list. And so that's going to provide this uh, 3,639. Technically, I said the RD-58 engine is going to handle, handle our transfer, but uh, right now, because we're a little bit light, uh, this is supposed to have other engines on the side, it's supposed to have boosters. But uh, I'll wait on that while we're testing the engines to make it cheaper. Uh, but uh, yeah, so right now it'll have to complete orbit, which is fine because it has multiple ignitions. It's got five ignitions altogether, and we should test that. So it'll finish orbit and then start our transfer. The AJ-10 will finish our transfer and then attempt the landing. Uh, it might not have enough fuel for the landing, though. So in that case, we're just going to land on these little tanks here with the one kilonewton thruster. And that'll be the plan. Uh, so we might just dump that stage. And uh, at the bottom, we've got new engines too. We've got H1s, four of them. They're cheap, they're 200 apiece, which makes them cheaper than the LRA9s, which were another candidate. And they are also much more efficient. Uh, so LRA9s, uh, I think we have the configuration that gets us to 282 seconds ISP. Uh, these are 289, I say much more efficient, but um, they are also, they also have a lot more thrust um, and they're lighter. So they're 636 kilograms, 947 kilonewtons. These are uh, 758 kilonewtons and 720 kilograms. So they're better, they're better and they fit on the bottom of this. They're easily clusterable and so, and they're shiny. They're very shiny and good looking. So that's a plus, obviously. So yeah, this is a new engine test uh, that's got to take advantage of our new uh, 
um, launch pad. I kept the fairing base to our prefab fairing uh, size in order to avoid having to tool that. And But I did have to tool these. So the fairing base I didn't have to tool, but I did have to tool the fairings. And this inner stage is of course completely new and had to be tooled. So yeah, but otherwise 14 days to build. And uh, it's an expensive engine test, but it should be interesting. And hopefully we can land on the moon. So uh, to that extent, before I build it, let's pick up a contract, uh, lunar landing contract. And we've got a backup in the form of uh, Lunar Lander A, already queued. Lunar Atlas A, let me see, what was it called again? Yeah, we're uh, building a Lunar Lander A on an Atlas already, so that'll be fine. We don't need the crewed Atlas just yet. Uh, we'll prioritize that and we'll prioritize this new rocket for a Lunar Landing. And we will pick up yet another lunar landing uncrewed contract. Now I should put some science on the probe. We really don't have much science, so I'll add the science to it, and maybe dump some up later since I have. We're not really bringing it back. I'll keep the heat shield on, but we won't be bringing it back. So I'll pick this up to pay for the flight. Okay, so here we go with this test, and it sure looks like I picked the wrong fairings, because the shaders are messed up <laughs> but uh all right well here we go again you know we never seem to get fairings with good shaders for some reason these days okay sas on throttle is up we're basically lined up with the moon and we're lighting h1 engines for the first time ignition and launch well, let's see how many quit on us. It's a long, tall rocket, so it's gonna have aerodynamic issues if they quit too early. There's a very small chance I can sneak in and uh, shut off the opposing engine in order to save it in case one fails. And maybe the Gimbling will handle it with three engines. Yeah, I don't know what's up with these fairings. I thought these were the good fairings, too. Uh, the Soyuz fairing wall. I thought about giving this like proton-like tanks to take better advantage of the thrust weight ratio. It's a little bit high off the pad right now. And the fairings are sure making well. This side looks weird because they're shaded differently than the rest of the body too. I don't understand. I never had this problem with just regular procedural fairings. It only seems to be a problem with procedural fairings for everything. I think I'm... I don't know what problems it might cause if I ditch it, but I might ditch it. I, I just want to have procedural fairings. Not procedural fairings for everything. Now, I wasn't sure whether the LR-105 would be safe to ignite right on set. Because, you know, we've been lighting it on the ground. So I added Separatrons, just in case. No, I don't. Oh, okay, it's fine. Oh, maybe... Oh, that was dicey. Alright, we got rid of the fairings. That's good. Actually, we do need to give the RD-58 some time to burn. So I'll keep the pitch up. So I didn't even realize that the Titan 1 used uh, this form factor of a tank initially. We're eventually going to switch to 3.05 meter tanks, but this is just a 2 meter one. Might be useful for certain purposes, especially with a crewed flight, because it would fit like a Gemini capsule or, or the Mercury or Mark 1 capsule on top. Just about right. That's also one reason why I tooled the balloon tank here to 2 meters. It would be suited to either the Mark 1 pod size or the uh, Gemini size. So it could be used as a transfer stage. The expected mass of the spacecraft for, say, a lunar flyby or even lunar orbit mission is about the same mass as we have up here. So, as soon as we get lunar rated heat shields, 
this stage can be our transfer stage. We might, we'll need a bigger rocket, a rocket capable of launching direct, uh, all of this directly into Earth orbit. But I think that's doable in 350 tons, so. So we might be good for a lunar flyby or even a lunar orbit mission. A uh, lunar flyby, a uh, lunar orbit only if it's very loose, I think. Okay, separation, RCS. Whoa, 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 oh, jeez. I don't know what that glitch is all about. It's always very painful. So basically, we'd need about 1,300 more meters per second on the launcher. Okay, how's the engine? Very stable. All right, I ignition. So first ignition of uh, 11D33. I, I'm just gonna call it an RD58 if you don't mind. Just gonna call it an RD58. Its mean time before failure is pretty low. 900 seconds. Its maximum is much, much higher than that, so it'll benefit us to use it a few times before we do anything critical with it, like put Kerbals on board. Again, you can't beat the five ignitions and the 340 second ISP right now. The only real competitor is like the Agena engine. Because you can cluster a lot of them, you get a lot more thrust out of a certain diameter with the Agena engine. But that's about it. Probably it would have been a good idea for me to just unlock the Agena tank to use with this. But that does make it a little bit taller, and again, I wanted a form factor that could fit pods a little bit better. Oh, we've got our first problem. Uh, reduced thrust. That's not much of a problem, actually. As long as the ISP is fine, we can deal with re reduced thrust. Uh, we should probably pitch up, though. Making orbit... And shut down. 219 by 177 and we are about 1,300 meters per second short from where we would need to be for this to all work out. Okay, that's a nice close approach. No big problems. Question is whether this ignites again or not. Now let's see, it's about two and a half minutes on this stage and then probably another minute on the next stage. K node, and unfortunately once the engine has a problem, we can't really tell from the icon whether it's settled or not. Okay, running the RCS at a time, and ignition. It has ignited with its reduced thrust. Oh, I wonder whether MechJab accounted for the reduced thrust or not when giving that time. I... No, it didn't. Okay, so we're, our timing's gonna be a bit off. We could once again carry less hydrazine on this stage. Oh, up, 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 up. We've had a problem. The engine has totally quit on us now, so let's put it on stage. Ignite. Uh, it's a bit tight on the landing part of all this. At least it does seem like we have all our ignitions for this, all infinity of them. This is the first time we are using an AJ-10 mid as well. Uh, we've got a substantially higher mean time before failure with it. These uh, tanks down here are also UDMHN nitric acid. Okay, one meter per second off there, but probably quite a bit off. Of, well, you know, it's not bad, but it's not, either way, it's not great for communication. What we should do is just sort of aim directly for, do we have backward facing? Not really. Are they operational? They're misconfigured. Well, shucks. Okay. Well, these on top are fine, but they're really weak. 
That's going to be a problem for landing. I don't think I'm going to be able to land safely with uh, these thrusters not functioning. Okay, uh, actually we don't need to go retrograde. Uh, just hold on there. You know, a direct approach like that is probably the best. Hold that thought. Okay, on to the moon. 2,205 meters per second is a bit tight. I don't think we're going to make it, but we can test... Well, we just lost communication. That's a bad sign. So we probably need more antennae on here. Oh, these have to be activated. I did not know that. I thought they were always on. I thought the surface attached ones were always on. Well, we can't really hang out. If we don't have connection, there's going to be an impactor. Oh, we've got connection. All right, let's, uh, we must be relaying through something. Let's activate these. Hmm. Doesn't say, oh, there we go, fine. Oh, right, signal delay. Okay, good. They are activated. And... We're communi communicating back directly now. Right, so I expect our surface velocity to be mm, probably higher than 2,205, but we'll give the AJ-10 a workout. Also, I did action group the science, but I don't think... Oh, this one is new. Transmit. And orbital... orbital Orbital perturbation is new. High over the moon, they're unique. Huh. Why Why do I feel like we've reset some stuff? Because I'm sure we've done temperature scan high over the moon, right? Well, so what's our total burn time? Ooh, well, that 11 minute burn time on the 1 kilonewton thruster is sure not going to help. Now we wish we had an error bee there, but then the error bee can't be used as the final landing stage because it doesn't reignite. Okay, have we done high over for this? Visible imaging is new. Orbital perturbation is new. Okay, how long until impact? It's telling me a suicide burn countdown, but that's probably wrong. Time to land 10 minutes. Hmm. Okay, ignition. Okay. Come on. Okay, yeah, this is gonna take a while. Yes, it says time to land six minutes. Ooh, that negative suicide burn countdown though, that's not nice. I mean, some negative is fine, but it's not ticking closer to zero very quickly, is it? Anyway, our surface velocity is greater than our delta V. Okay, we're just above the biome now. But I think, oh no, a visible imaging is new. So we're really like a ranger probe now. Temperature scan is new. I don't understand. Maybe I'm mistaking, uh, confusing this with the RP1 series that we're doing on Twitch collaboratively. It's a very quiet little one kilonewton thruster. And that was pretty quiet impact. All right. Well, I think that does it for me today. Um, we've got a new rocket. We need to run the engines a few times to make sure they all work out. The H1s worked fine, so that's nice, but they might be just lying in wait until they can pounce on us later. Uh, so yeah, we still have a contract to land uh, another probe on the moon, but we're going to try and make it a surface, uh, a sample return mission, or at least the test of a sample return mission. So we're going to try this sort of thing again. Probably, hopefully, we'll be unlocking better RCS fuel, fuel, fuels soon. I'm not going to use Kavia B. Um, that's just nonsense. Anyway, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.